Hi guys, welcome to Calculus Crush. Today we're going to be taking the derivative of this function, x minus the square root of x, all divided by the square root of x cubed. And we're going to be using the quotient rule. You can do this problem just using the ordinary power rule. It might actually be a little bit easier, but we're going to use the quotient rule to do this problem. First, we need to write down what the quotient rule is. So if we have y equals a function divided by another function, so f over g, then the derivative of y, y prime, is the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all divided by the bottom squared. This is the quotient rule of calculus. If you don't know where this comes from, you can click on this expression and it will link you to a video I made deriving the quotient rule. So let's begin. The first thing we need to do is get rid of these root signs. Uh, it's much easier to use the power rule when you don't have any root signs. We're not going to take the derivative yet, we're just going to rewrite this formula, turning root signs into fractions. So the square root of x is the same thing as x to the power of 1 half. And on the bottom, we have x cubed divided by 2. That's the square root part. So we've rewritten the function. Now let's take the derivative. So y prime equals. Now we need to identify what is the top and what is the bottom in order to apply the quotient rule. It's very, very simple for this question. This, of course, would be our top or our f. And then down here, this guy x to the power of 3 halves. That would be our bottom. So y prime equals the derivative of the top. So the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of x to the power of a half is 1 half x to the minus a half. So that's the derivative of the top, or f prime. Now we multiply it by the bottom, x to the 3 halves. Then we subtract the top, x minus x to the half times the derivative of the bottom, which is 3 halves x to the 1 half. And that is all divided by x to the 3 halves squared. Just to point it out, this is our f prime. This is g. This is f and this is g prime. Let's simplify this. We need to expand this first term. 1 times x to the power of 3 halves is just x to the power of 3 halves minus 1 half. Remember when we multiply two expressions we need to add the exponents. 3 halves minus a half is 2 over 2 which is just 1. So we have 1 half x for that second term. Minus 3 halves x to the power of 3 halves plus 3 halves x. x to the half times x to the half is x to the 2 over 2, which is just x. And this is all divided by x cubed. Now let's group like terms together. x to the 3 halves minus 3 halves x to the 3 halves. That gives us minus 1 half x to the 3 halves. And then minus 1 half x plus 3 halves x, that's plus x, all divided by x cubed. Now we can factor out a 1 half x. I'm going to switch the order, so I'm going to write this term first. So we have 2 minus x to the half 
divided by x cubed. So we can cancel out one of these x's from the top and bottom. And our final answer is 2 minus, now I'm going to put the square roots back because they look nicer at the end. And on the bottom, we have the 2 from over here, x squared. So let's write this, our final answer, y prime equals 2 minus the square root of x divided by x squared times 2. And there you go. That is the final answer. You could also, at this step here, you could divide both x and x to the half by x to the 3 halves. So that would give you x to the minus half minus x to the minus 1. And then just do the, pro the power rule on this. Actually, let's do that right now. So let's move over here. So y prime equals negative 1 half x to the minus 3 halves plus x to the minus 2. Let's factor out the smallest common factor, which would be x to the minus 2 and a 1 half. And what we have left over with is on this side, we have a 2 and then a minus x to the 1 half. So if we write that, 2 minus the square root of x over 2x squared. It's the same expression we got here. But of course that way was much easier and that is the way you should do this question. It's not necessary to use a quotient rule. Um, if we had something like this on the bottom, well then you'd have to use a quotient rule because you wouldn't be able to divide them. Thanks a lot for watching you guys. If you have any questions just leave them in the comments section. I'd be happy to answer them. Until next time.